You gain points, but it's still pointless. Hey everyone, this is Attackers, and today I would like to talk about the games that I played in February again. I obviously already did that for January, and that was quite fun. So as you can see, like <laughs> again, like lots of games I played here. There are a few changes here. Um, although I will still use Canva again because I just like using it. I might switch to a different program at some point, but I just do everything like in Canva or like a lot for my YouTube channel, so I will still use it. And also, um, I removed the F tier here. Um, that's just because. I mean, it's like really like highly unrealistic I will ever put a game in F because I mean, it, the game needs to be like nearly unplayable, right? Um, for me in order to put it into F tier. So um, that's why I am not doing that. Um, so if a game is really that bad, then I would just say it and put it in D, but I doubt I would put anything in F, at least I hope. All right, so without much further ado, let's get started. Um, I will just like say like it's just a few sentences about each game. The video doesn't take too long, right? All right, let's start with the first game. Um, like two I have overlaid here because I just <laughs> played too many games. So let's play with, uh, let's start with Too Many Bones. Um, a game I pl finally played. Uh, my neighbor actually has a copy, like I like this huge box and whatever. Um, and I always wanted to play it and I like it. I like it. I don't think I quite love it yet, um, but we will play it next week again. So um, looking forward to that. Um, I will put it in A for now because I think it is a really solid game has some really neat mechanisms. Uh, so let me just put it in A for now. Uh, it might um, actually put it be put into S at some point. It does have the potential. So yeah, let me just put it there for now. Then next game we have is Flip Freighters. Uh, that is like a flip and ride with a regular deck of cards. I played that on Board Game Arena. Um, it was nice. Um, I enjoyed playing it. Um, I think I would give it a B in terms of gameplay, but uh, I don't think replay value is too high. And it was okay. It just it wasn't amazing. So I'll put it in C for now. Next up, we have Innovation, um, a game with a really interesting mechanism where you like splay cards left and right, and it's like kind of a sieve building thing. Um, and it can be quite mean and take that like. I I do see the appeal um, for the game, but I don't like it too much. Uh, not yet. Maybe it may change at some point. But let me just put it into uh, C for now. Then we have Sky Team. I've already talked about this. Um, a game that I will release, I think, this week in Germany, finally. Maybe even today or tomorrow. I will get it immediately because it is amazing. One of the best two-player games ever. Um, give it a chat, give it a try if you can. Um, this is just pure gold. Um, definitely S tier. Vegetable Stock. It's like kind of a guilty pleasure. This is not an amazing game, but it's like a really small card game. You can you explain this within like two minutes. You can play this with like pretty much really anyone. It's like really whimsical and cute and really quick to play. So I like it, Um, but it's still not amazing, right? It's not an amazing game, so I can't like give it an A or higher. But I will give it a B because it's really, really solid. Then we have Dolph Um, a game that I don't play solo as much as I should. Um, but I really, really like this game. Um, but it does not quite qualify for a uh, for an S, right? I give I will give it an A uh, because it is a really good game. Um, I highly suggest you play it if you can. You can play it great solo. You can play it with multiple players. Great cooperative game that like kind of grows as you play. Wonderful, but not quite S. S would be rather something like Cascadia then. Res Arcana. This is like a my problem child. I've played this game several times now and I like it more and more. Uh, I see the appeal. I kind of like the mechanism there, um, but I'm still not a fan of the game somehow. I don't know. I can't still get into it too much because it's like really tight and I have the feeling I don't have like too many decisions I can do make during a turn, right? There isn't too much I can do. So I'm still not quite sure where to place it. I would love to like it more. I really want to love this game. Um, and maybe I will at some point, but at the moment it is only in B. I hope I will put it into A at some point, maybe even into S. I would really like to own this game, but somehow, I don't know. I don't love it as much as I would like to. Patchwork, we don't even have to discuss that. <laughs> it's one of the best two-player games uh, ever, seriously. Um, definitely, yeah, one of the best two-player games ever. Um, definitely S tier. Easily, hands down. Um, Ancient Realm, um, a nice solo game by Buttonshy Games. I like the mechanism. Um, I'm not very good at the game, but I like it. I don't bust it out as often as I should, right? Um, so I can't like rank it like S or whatever, but it is a very solid solo game. Ah, I, it's kind of tough. I don't know if I want to give it a B or an A. I think I will give it 
Hmm, it's kind of tough because it is a good game, but I don't play too much. Let me, you know what? Let me give it an A for now. It does deserve a good rating because it's a good game. Next time I might put it into B, depending on how much how much more often I want to play it, right? Mountain Goats. Oh, that is kind of tough. Uh, it's a really fun uh, dice rolling game. Um, a little bit similar to Can't Stop, just different. Uh, really simple to play. Uh, very fun, very funny theme as well. Very small and portable. Just takes a lot, a lot of space on the table, right? But apart from that, it's a really good thing. I would like to give it an S in terms of just um, like raw, like fun factor, but it does not quite deserve an S. So I would give it an A, right? Uh, there we go. All right, next up is Telestration. It's a really cool party game. Um, it's like more an activity and less of a game because, uh, yeah, you just uh, like draw and then you try to like guess what uh, the other people have drawn and then they draw based on your word. Like you like, kind of pass that around. You don't really like play the game. It's like more an activity and it's really fun. So I would give it an A. Gold is a really solid memory game. It is quite fun. Um, you have like gold you need to find, but you also have like your gold diggers that you also need to like turn over in the same turn you turn over gold, but then you also need to see like the gold digger needs to have like a value as strong as the gold you're turning over. And you can also like, um, like remove the gold diggers of other players. So it is pretty fun, but I can't give it more than it be. It's not amazing. It's just fun. It's like really in a small package. You can easily carry it around. So yeah. A solid B. Regicide. I will give that an A. I've talked about it last time uh, already. And it, I haven't played it like in a, like in like two or three weeks. But it's like a really good game. I will get only give it an A. Um, if I would only rate the solo experience, I think I would give it an S even. But I don't like the multiplayer as much as the solo game. Two players are still fine. Above that, I don't really feel the need playing it. So solo, S, but like all together, like uh, rating the entire game an A. Heat. Clear winner um, has received the Golden Age of Games Award, just like other games in the S tier here. Um, so clearly, clearly S tier, an amazing game. You can play with one, two, six players. Each player count is amazing. Everything works really well because you have these bots that are amazing. This is just a great game. Even if you don't like racing games, I don't like uh, racing themes either. Still, I hope you can try the game at some point. It's amazing. Um, Self Careless, I will give it an A. Um, this is a really nice game I have played on the channel as well. Um, it is really simple. You don't have like a whole lot of player agency, a lot of choices, but it's a really cozy game. It has great artwork. It's really quick to play and it's fun. So this is like a feel good game. So definitely an A. Gala Script, easily S tier. One of the best solo games in my opinion. One of the best in hand card games. I can't wait here for a like a physical release at some point. I will be the first in line probably to get this game then. It's amazing. Really amazing. Next up is the Geeker Super Slide. This is not a, like a board game in the traditional sense or card game. You can also, also f not find it on Board Game Geek, but it is something that you can play, so to speak. Um, so um, you have like a specific pattern in the top left. It's like an electronic device. And then you have to like slide these uh, sliders like back and forth in order to get like the red, uh, the red square here to the bottom of the, um, of the device. It's fun. It's good fun. It's a nice puzzle. It's nothing amazing, but it's something nice, like when you're on the like couch to like kill time. So uh, yeah, it's decent. Uh, we'll put it in B. That's fine. Twenty strong. Twenty strong. Another problem child. Uh, I enjoy the game, but I think it's way too pricey for what it is. So far, I don't love it. Note, I have only played like the uh, the base game so far, Solar Sentinels, but it's not bad. Um, but I think I cannot really give it an A yet. I have to give it a B for now, uh, so I haven't like played it again after having played it a few times. So I will just leave it in B for now. I will have to like bust it out again and hope that I can give it a better rating at some point. Voll auf die 18. Uh, that sounded like weird now because that's German. Like the theme is quite kind of funny, um, but the gameplay itself is like pretty. It's like not that great. So I will give it a C. It's also nothing that I will really have to talk about in length here because it's not that great. Um, Star Wars. Um, Star Arms, people always expect me to put that into S because I play it that much. Yes, I really like the game. I just don't think it, it's like an S tier game. It's really good. It's great, don't get me wrong, but um, there are other deck builders that are rather S tier. It's an A, that's fine. Fruit picking. Uh, fruit picking, I would have liked to give an A or B first. 
Um, it's like a, it has like the Mancala mechanism where you like um, like pick up tokens from one spot and then you put them place like one token in each um, upcoming spot um, in a clockwise direction and um, it is decent I think as a multiplayer game it would work quite well as a solo game it is like it's kind of a solvable puzzle it's like very very thinky and not just fun enough for that so I think as a multiplayer game I would maybe give it a B or something as a solo game I don't like it too much. Um, this will get only a C. Fargle is a pushy luck game that is kind of similar. It has kind of similarities with Yahtzee, but I would rather play Yahtzee. And that says a lot about this game, right? Uh, will I give it a D? I don't think I would give it a D, but I will give it a C. Would I give Yahtzee a B? Maybe. Just because uh, I... I do like the mechanism quite a bit. So let me give it a C, I guess. Casa Burgundy, you know that. It's one of my most played games. It's like my number three game of all time. I have played this almost 200 times, I think. So definitely S tier. Bomespan? Um, Bomespan I really like. I played the game. I've played the game three times so far. Uh, I haven't busted it out in like a week or two because I just had other projects. Uh, so ah, I would like to give it an S. You know what? Currently, I will give it an S. I think it's really solid. It's no, not solid. It's really, really good. It might drop to an A at some point, but I think I will give it an S for now. It's good. Solstice is solid. Um, it is a game where you like build like a panorama of cards. Um, it is not bad. I didn't really see the appeal yet, so I will give it a C for now. Um, so I, I have actually started another game on Board Game Arena just now. And after that, I will be able to tell you next month, <laughs> uh, because we have March now, um, I, will, I will tell you next month how, if like the rating changed. Pixies, I did not like. Pixies works, but it's really boring in my opinion. So this is actually the first game in detail today. Uh, I feel kind of sorry for that, because I don't think it's a bad game, but I just didn't enjoy it. It's kind of boring. Uh, you just uh, have like the choice of two cards and you have like a grid of nine cards, like a three by three grid and you put the cards there and you're trying to like gain points with them, but they don't have like any abilities or whatever, right? They just give you points. It's it's kind of pointless in my opinion. <laughs> you gain points, but it's still pointless. So, Ian Zend, <laughs> crazy. This game, um, I will play it this weekend as well. And I think when I'm done with that, I would have played this game this year already like 15 to 20 times. And we have only the beginning of March. So, yeah, it's an amazing game. It is actually becoming quite dangerous for my top three games. It is like my number one solo game already. I think it will stay for quite a while. And it might even become dangerous for my top three games. So, oh, this is a good one. Shipwreck Arcana, also an S. I have only played this twice, all right? Um, but I will play it this weekend again. It's an amazing deduction game. It kind of has vibes of Paint the Roses, just, of course, like different gameplay. But, like, the general idea, like like... The, the, the parts of your brain you need to use to kind of play this game. Uh, I would put it like in the in a similar ballpark with Paint the Roses, which also gets an S for me. It's a really great deduction game. It's really hard to get. I actually had to import it from Lithuania uh, to get it to Germany because it was impossible to get, um, but it was worth it. It's really great. Quirkle. Quirkle is a game where you place shapes uh, next to each other. Um, it's a puzzle game. It's nice. It's solid. I got it because I thought it was it would be a good po uh, good travel game. I got the travel edition. I don't know if I would actually take it when I travel. If I would take it with me. I don't know if it would stay in my collection. I'm not quite sure. Skio. Skio is like pretty much like like or like golf, just um the, the card game you can play with regular cards. There's also like Rattata Cat is also a game that has like the same similar uh, same mechanism or similar mechanism. It's good. I like I really like playing it, but I can't give it an A. Right, it's just way too simple and too luck driven for that. But it's a it is a game that I really like to play. Space Base, Space Base is a game I finally sold. Um, I do play it often on online. I won my first game one or two weeks ago. That's great because I'm really bad at the game, and I was doing really well. It was an amazing game, like an amazing um, session. But I still don't like the game too much. I'm sorry. I, I I know a lot of people love this game, and this will not go over well with a lot of people watching my video. But I don't know. I don't like it. I, I can, I can appreciate what the game is doing. Right? It's cool to like get stuff when it's like 
other people's turns. But I just find like like a lot of card effects are just not very interesting. A lot of card effects are just way too convoluted. I don't want to get them because they don't really like grant me any points. The other people all the other players all get like points and and currency and stuff, and I'm just having like stupid card effects that I don't really find useful. Maybe I'm just not good enough at the game to kind of like understand what the other cards do. But I don't know. I would like, like, I think like a mixture of Machikoro and Space Base I would enjoy, but I don't really enjoy either of those games, like, just by themselves. So I don't know. I will have to give it a C. I just don't like it. Roll to the top is a roll and ride that is solid. You just roll numbers and you can combine them or take them, like, as a single value and you just, like, fill up these shapes, like pyramids or the Eiffel Tower or whatever. It's a cool idea, but it's also quite boring. I... You know what? It's like something I can play solo on Board Game Arena if I want to play something and I want to like think too much, right? But it's nothing that I will like want to like play by myself. Like all of these C games, I would technically play. Maybe even like, oh, you know what? I think I would like to play like another like game of Space Race and hope that I can maybe win again. I would do that. I would play World to the Top. I think too much either, uh, except when I'm like really bored. Uh, Tapestry S. Yes. S tier, S tier, S tier. This is an amazing game. It is great without, without the uh, without the expansion. It's even better with the expansion. It's amazing. You should play it with the uh, with the balanced Sif sets. But even if you don't have the balanced Sif pack, like the revised one, you can also just um, like print out a sheet by Stormaya Games where they like tell you like what to change for each civilization. Then it's great. An amazing game. Ghost Stories. I have only played once, but I will play this weekend again because, oh man, how could I sleep on this classic? This is amazing. I just played it solo and it worked really well. And this time I will play multiplayer, two player, and a two player count. But so far, S tier. Hands down. Amazing cooperative game. Uh, Lands of Gaza. I mean, as usual, like Sami, the, uh, the designer. And a friend of mine, he um, <laughs> he actually uh, found it quite funny that I said last time when I talked about it, okay, there's nothing to say about the game. And that is kind of true and kind of not true. Of course, there's a lot to say about the game because it's amazing. But I don't really have to say a lot about it because I have talked about the game a lot on my channel. You know I love it. It's my top two game on rank two at the moment. As long as Ian's End will not rise further in rank, right? Then Lance of Gather will stay there for a while. I think it's a great storytelling game. I highly, highly suggest you at least try it at some point if you can. Mining Colony is decent. I have released a video on my channel. I enjoy playing the game. I don't bust it out a lot, but when I play it, I am having fun. I can't give it an A because I just don't feel the urge to like play it too often. And I don't think it will stay in my collection forever. I think I will just play it as often as I think I need to until I have like discovered like all there's to discover and then I will probably also sell it off at some point. I think like within the next few months I will sell it off, but I will keep it for now. It's a very solid game. I like playing it. Um, then we have Le Roi de Ribot, which is like a French game. Um which I didn't like too much. Um, it's a game you can play in two minutes. I'm not kidding. You learn the game. To teach the game takes like three, four minutes. And then you play within two, three, four, five minutes. I'm not even kidding. Um, it's it's kind of de like kind of a deduction game. But you also like play card parts in the middle. There are like three win conditions, I think. But the game is so luck. can to be so luck based. And it's so quick. And I don't really like feel like I'm playing a game. That I'm like actually making like informed decisions and stuff. Yeah, it's another game in the D tier. I, I really don't like this. I think this is like the game I like least of all the games here. So I will not put it into F. Even if I had F, I would not put it there. But mm, it would come close. I don't like it. Daybreak. I will give that an S. Um, I like the game a lot. Um, it's a really good cooperative game. It is difficult. It is very difficult to win. But it's great solo. It's great, great multiplayer. I play it a lot on Board Game Arena at the moment. But I do have the physical copy and I will keep the physical copy because it's great to bust it out here. It's a nice game. A great theme. And it's really tough to win. Um, I have won only once and that was solo. So and that was the first game. So maybe I didn't even play all the rules correctly. But it's a really good game. Bärenpark. Oh man. I've only played this once and I love it. It's a great polyomino tile lane game. I will give this an A for now. But I see the potential um, of playing this more often solo. 
Lookout Games, if you watch this video or if you somehow hear of me talking about Baron Park here, um, if you have a way to like uh, tell me how I can um, get a hands on my the official solo mode because I can't order like the magazine it was in. There's like a German magazine by Lookout Games where you had like the official solo mode for this. I would actually buy this game and play it on my channel if I could get my hands on the official solo mode. Um, if any of you can help me, please do. Because I like this game a lot and I see a lot of potential of me also like this, liking this solo a lot. I just need to get the solo mode. Dig Up Adventure. I don't like this. And this is another game that is similar to Skio and Rattata Cat and whatever that, like those games that I just talked about. But I think it's just the worst version of that. Um, I don't even know how to explain this game. But you can play it on Board Game Arena if you want to. Um, I just don't enjoy playing. Lost Cities. Lost Cities, I'm kind of conflicted. Uh, Lost Cities is not a game I would like to play on a daily basis, but I like to play it quite a bit. Like I like to play it like every other, uh, every few weeks. So I don't think I can give it quite an S, although it's good. But I think I will give it an A. It's a very good game. Um, it's a really cool hand management, also kind of a uh, kind of a game where you have to like take a few risks. So it's kind of cool. Bandido is a decent game. I enjoy playing it off and on, but I have two physical copies that I will probably sell off just because um, I like to play it online. Like the table space it takes up is just immense. And also it's like quite luck driven as well. So it is a decent game. I like playing it online off and on, but I think I will also give it a C. It's not bad, but it's also not amazing. Romy Rami. Oh man, this kind of breaks my heart. This has Rami rummy like uh rummy like mechanism and you might know that i love rummy although it's a very luck driven game with not a lot of not a lot of decisions something that doesn't sound like something i would like but i love playing rummy and Romy rummy is not bad but i also didn't love it i will also give this a c this is unfortunate a lot of people like it and i had a lot of hopes here but no it's not my type of game Splinter Duel. Wow, I've only played this twice, but this will give an S. I do own a Splinter copy here. I actually own a very rare Pokemon-themed uh, Korea-exclusive um, Splinter copy, and I like Splinter. And I didn't think I would need Splinter Duel, but I might actually have to purchase that at some point because it's a really good game. I think I would enjoy Splinter Duel um, being a game that you could play with like up to four players. Like, because it has a few mechanisms in there that Splendor could benefit from. I like this. Cahoots is cool. It's a game I enjoy. Um, can I give it an A? I don't know. I don't think so. I will give it a B, but I really enjoy playing it. Uh, I just recently got it because it was, like, really inexpensive to get here. So I will give this a B. Um, then we have Vault, um, which I... Uh, it's okay. It's another roll and write. It's okay. You put, like... You like go clockwise, um, and you first put like uh, numbers and columns, and then a rows. You need to fill everything up, and it is decent, but it's also not amazing. I would also not choose to play it too much. Do I like it less? I I don't think I like it more than Road to the Top. So I will have to give it a B, that make, uh, a D. That makes sense, right? Doesn't make any sense to give it more than that. Would I put Fargle up there? Yes, yeah, Fargle has the push it mechanism. I think I will still put, leave it up there. Mandala. Mm, I'm also conflicted on that one. I kind of like the mechanism. Um, it's quite an interesting mechanism, but it's also nothing that I'm like yearning to play again. Um, let me give it a B. It does have potential to receive an A if I play it more often. I would have to give it a B for now. Yeah, I think that that is fair. That is something I can actually live with. Then we have Gizmos. Gizmos is a game I really enjoy. It's not an S, but I will give it an A tier. Um, it's a game that I really enjoy playing as well. Um, it is a, it, this is a true engine builder because people always keep saying like, oh, this game has engine building. This game has engine building. Yeah, they do. But they are, this is only a small part. But this is a true engine builder. You do nothing except building up your engine and that's really satisfying. Seven Wonders Duel, clearly an S, S tier, clearly. Um, I love this game. One of the best two player games as well. So you see there are like four amazing two player games here that I played in February. Sky Team probably being the best at the moment, then also Patchwork, amazing, Spin Duel, amazing, and Seven Wonders Duel, also amazing. All really great games. Arctic Roll is a roll and write I did a preview for, and I enjoyed the game. It was decent. It was not bad. It is better than these games for sure. I, would put, I wouldn't put it into A. 
Um, I like the previous game, Chateau, by the same developer more. Um, and this one here, we'll give it, give, I will give it a B. It's a, it's a whimsical, fun game. Um, I would play with other people if they wanted to, so that is fine. Arcana Rising. I'm kind of conflicted on that as well. The game definitely is nothing special. And it takes like way too much, up too much space for what it is. You could put it in a smaller box, like all the components and whatever would not be necessary. Um, so I can't give it an S, but I also don't want, to, don't want to give it a B because I think the mechanism is very unique. I will uh, post a playthrough on my channel at some point for that, whenever I get the chance to. I will give it an A. I think it's a decent game. I hope it will stay an A for a while because I somehow like the game. La Familia Horde. Oh man. Um, a game I cannot show on the channel for now. Maybe I can get Aelis to play it with me. Um, because you can't play it solo. Man, could you please, Grand Gamers Guild, could you may please release a solo mode for that? Um, it's a cool game. It's a family game. It's like so simple. You like get, you, you like plant like crops, like crops in the market and you um, can like water crops when they're fully watered. You get like either money or you get experience points and that's all and then you just with your money you buy new plants then you get water and fertilizer um, the water you get for yourself the fertilizer you get for yourself or for the opponent and then your plants grow and give you money or victory points it's too simple but i like it and i will give it an a just because like the art style is amazing seriously really cool art style and the game itself is good i really like it and um, so far i will give an a i will get an a Nope is a card game that has an interesting mechanism. Uh, you just try to get rid of your cards, uh, but I don't enjoy it too much. I am also selling that off. Um, it's just too simple. There are so many simple card games that are better. Well, and with that, we have ranked all of my, I don't know how many games, like way too many, like my 40 or 50 different games I played last, last month. And I hope you found this uh, entertaining. Um, yeah, that is the ranking for February. I'm looking forward to seeing what I play, what I'm playing in March. Small, a little spoiler: there are some amazing games I'm planning to play this month. So let's see how I rank those next month. Um, this month is a little bit busy for me, and also I'm playing a lot of Aeon's End, um, and, and also a lot of Tapestry and a lot of uh, Castle Burgundy and Wormspan. So a lot of the same game, right? So um, it's possible that next month I will have less games to talk about. Uh, but let's see. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for new games that I can try. So let's just see. All right. So that marks the end of my of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. As usual, I want to thank all of you for your support, especially my very generous Patreon supporters. The biggest thanks go out to Thagono, who is the most generous supporter at the highest tier. Thank you so much for that. I really highly appreciate that. You can support me in numerous ways. You can watch my videos, like them, comment below them. You can even subscribe to my channel if you like my videos enough, which would make my day and also help my channel grow. You can also support me on Patreon if you like what I do and you would like to see me do even more amazing, cool things. And you can also join my Discord server in case you would like to hang out with me and my amazing community. All right, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the very next video. Take care, everyone. Stay safe and cheers.